Penny Dreadful. I know it's been a while, I'm actually in the process of moving right now. So, uh, say goodbye to this wall. Say goodbye to the dresser. I'm actually taking the dresser, but, um, it might not be the backdrop anymore. Anyway, this is Season 2, Episode 4. It's titled, Evil Spirits in Heavenly Places. Let's do it. And against evil spirits in heavenly places. They did the thing! They said the title of the episode! It's an autobiography. The memoirs of the devil. The devil needs to go to book signings. You may just be watching for lions, but the frame you're sitting in is so freaking cool. They're all fresh when they come out the molds, and then I make them suffer. You're an artist. John seriously should just date a blind girl. It works. Don't stab a horsey. Now I know they're evil. You were just hoping he was looking. If he wasn't looking, he'd been hit by a freaking horse. I mean, I suppose you're super evil and probably gonna live through it, but still. I mean, and also, what if someone else saved her? Whoa. Mr. Roper's looking jacked up. I am a citizen of the United States of America. America. Lady Frankenstein. Yes. That's her name. Excuse me. Oh my god. Frankenstein, you're so adorable when you're nervous. I will need undergarments. You're gonna give that boy a heart attack. I can't. What? Aphrodite. That's a good name. Go with that. Your accent's good, but no trace of a Yankee in it for a girl who says she grew up in Maine. Northwestern is calling you out. Indiana, so go back and tell him to leave me be, or the next time he sees me, I'll have a gun to his head with my finger on the trigger. That'd be a weird thing to say if you were wrong and she wasn't hired by your father. But I'm frightened. What? Oh no, puppets are scary. No. Oh, baby Dorian Gray, you're so pretty. You went on a ping pong date. Are we thirteen? Don't disappoint me again, girl. Don't you hiss at your mother. Y'all, don't be making out in a ping pong hall. This is this is civilized society. Oh, you're so pretty for a dead girl. You're beautiful. You need to quit having a crush on your fake cousin. How did she get in a corset by herself? You had to lace her in, didn't you? The girl just said she feels like she's gonna topple over and you're putting her on a box. I'm good with stitching. <laughs> He's being so romantic with his not cousin. Okay, y'all are flirting too much for cousins. How is he gonna bridge this gap? He's gonna like one day kiss her and she's gonna be like, wait, I thought I was your cousin. And then there's that whole issue of like, John's gonna freak out because you stole his lady. Mrs. Paul. Oh yes, our clairvoyant twin. Yeah, that's gonna go great. Well, proceed with caution. A little bit, she's a witch, she bathes in blood. She didn't look like a witch. They never do. Does he smell something? Wolfie? Oh no, oh no, 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 you chameleoning with the wall? No. No, 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 camouflage, no. I'm sorry. No. No, but the answer's no. She just can't even right now. Nope, is there gonna be a witch? Witchies on the walls, guys, look at the walls. There's witchies on them. Don't go to your room alone. There are gonna be witchies in there. Oh my God, I want that buttercream tart. Okay, is anything gonna happen? This is dragging on too long. He made coffee, she's combing her hair, what now? Nope. Nope, there's something on the wall. Nope! It is like Mystique from X-Men. Girl, call for help. There is a naked weird girl in your room. There, there's more than one naked weird girl in your room. Oh, they everywhere. They everywhere. They in everyone's room. Turn around, Chandler. Oh, gotcha. They looking rough. Somebody do something. Well, what you saying, girl? What you saying? It's working. You made her leave. It worked. She's like, I got her weave. They're like, let's go. We got her weave. Let's go. No sensible shoes now, Mr. Chandler. He's like, darn. She didn't have any sensible shoes. She was naked. So they can sneak in without being detected, but they have to break your door when they leave. Dude, what is with this show? Like, it's kind of like slow through the whole thing and then the last like three minutes, it's crazy. So in last episode, it was like this kind of giant flashback. This episode starts where she's just finished telling the flashback, but then you see that she's in the room with like everyone because Chandler wanted everyone to know about it. Then they're all looking over like all those things that some crazy monk dude had where he was like writing down all these things in different languages. It was kind of like the devil's tongue. Again, I have to mention, who let some crazy guy in a jail cell have this many things? 
Apparently the crazy guy wrote like a little bit on each object in a different language, but it told some overarching story. Then after all that, Frankenstein's like, okay, whatever. Everything is real, apparently. Magic and all that stuff. Anyway, I'm going. As he's leaving, he's like, Vanessa, can I ask for a favor? Can you accompany me somewhere? And she's like, sure. He leaves. Vanessa goes to go to bed, but she sees, uh, what's his name? Subane? Whatever. I think that's his name. The dude with the, the, the scars. He's up on top of the stairs, and she's like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm keeping watch for, like, the things that hunt at night. She's like, um, okay. He's just staring at the door, and then across the street, you see one of the witch chicks is staring at the house. Then it cuts to the train, and they're doing, like, a crime scene of that mom and dad that were killed. That inspector dude's, like, trying to piece all this stuff together, and then he's like, you know what? It was probably magic. Then it cuts to that wax museum dude, and he's telling his wife about how he's gonna, like, expand stuff. And how he's going to keep a bunch of freaks in a cellar because they don't need light because they're freaks anyway. Then John is downstairs like stirring stuff. And the blind daughter of that wax museum guy, he, she comes downstairs. He's watching her. She starts sculpting faces, which is cool because she's blind. But hey, she knows what faces feel like. They talk about stuff. She's saying how it's kind of sad when she has to like sculpt these faces of people being like murdered. It's kind of touching. I mean, John can talk to a girl. Why does he need like another resurrected dead girl? He, he clearly got game. Chandler's walking around town, he sees the House of Horrors thing, he sees a newspaper about a baby getting stolen. He's just walking, and then one of those witch chicks, is like, sees him, and she, like, signals to the other witch chicks, and she, like, pokes this horse, makes the horse run, the girl just pretends to walk out in front of it, and Chandler saves her, she starts crying into his chest. Then it cuts to the inspector, talking to Mr. Roper, the dude who got his face ripped off, and he's like, you gotta help me, what attacked you? And Roper's like, I don't know, I'm American, I'm gonna leave soon anyway. Then he shows Frankenstein and Vanessa, and she's like, where is this? You're taking me. This is a weird place. He takes her to a dress shop, and he says that his cousin came to town, so she's from, like, the country, so she needs, like, fancy lady clothes. It's really awkward. It's clear that he is obsessed and in love with said cousin, but she's like, all right, why not? She helps him pick stuff out, and he's like, well, later we could all probably go get lunch with my cousin, which is like, that's gonna be really awkward, because, you know, she's that dead girl. Then he shows Chandler and that witch chick out for lunch, and she's telling him this story about how she's American and, like, this whole life story. And he's like, okay, first of all, your accent isn't right. Second of all, you must be from my father. So let my father know if I see him, I'm going to shoot him in the face. You have a nice day. Then it shows Dorian Gray, like, finally. I love that boy. Why is he not in more of this? He's with Angelique, I think was her name. The, the lady boy from two episodes ago. They're walking out like a couple. People are like, ooh, you're gross. And he's like, I don't care. I like this girl boy. Dorian takes her to a ping pong hall because it's like all the rage new sport. They start playing. Angelique totally like beats the crap out of him. Then it cuts to that main witch chick with her witch chick daughter that was just talking with Chandler. And she's like, look, he, he knew I wasn't like the person I said I was. So we're going to need to still fight him. The main chick's like, okay, we'll like full on fight him. But you can kill whoever you want, but just don't touch Vanessa. So the daughter witch chick hisses at her and she's like, hey, I'm your mother. Don't hiss at me. You're overreaching. Then it shows Angelique and Dorian and they have some more banter and Angelique's beat him at a bunch of games. And then they just start making out in the ping pong hall. And I'm like, guys, get a room. Then it cuts to Frankenstein and Lily and she's putting on all the clothes he bought her and she's like, oh, it hurts. Of course it suck. He starts like hemming her skirt and she starts talking about like, is this why we do this? Do we dress up for men? Do we do all these things for men? He's like, you know what? I don't want you to hurt. I like you. Go take your corset off. But then she decides to keep the shoes, and he's like, I thought you said they hurt your feet. And she's like, oh, but you like them. Quit flirting with your cousin. Mr. Lyle dude and Malcolm are still, like, deciphering stuff. And then Malcolm mentions that he likes this new girl, and he's like, oh, who? And he's like, oh, that witch chick, you know? The one that's, like, seems super evil. It's like, maybe just be careful around her. Chandler and Vanessa are sitting at the fireplace, and he's telling her about that chick, and he thinks it's someone that his dad sent. And Vanessa's like, no, wait, wait, she's a witch. So then Chandler's like, hey, do you want some coffee? And Vanessa's like, nah, I'm good. So Chandler goes to the kitchen, and that one dude, like, what's his name? Sabane? Sabane? I, I don't know the dude's name. I suck at that. Anyway, he is washing dishes, and Chandler, like, goes to help him. They talk a little bit. They kind of bro bond. Then Malcolm's like, hey, Vanessa, come over here. We're going to show you stuff. He shows her, like, what they've deciphered so far, and he's like, I don't think this is just, like, a chronicle. I think it's almost like a prophecy. It's part of an ongoing story. And I think you're a part of it. You know, the devil wants you. She's like, I don't want to be wanted by the devil. Why are you I think it's me? They don't even mention me in this. She gets all mad. So she's like, you know what? Screw it, guys. I'm going to bed. Vanessa tells everyone goodnight. She starts to walk into bed. And throughout this time, you're seeing, like, people, the chicks are, like, in the walls. But they're, like, camouflaging with the walls. And it's really creepy. And then it's, like, this big cut of, like, they're still deciphering stuff. 
they're still in the kitchen making food and coffee, and Vanessa's upstairs getting ready for bed, and you keep seeing these, like, people against the walls being all creepy. Then all at once, they all start, like, uncamouflaging themselves and attacking everyone. Mr. Lyle, like, holds up a crucifix and is trying to, like, ward that one off, and they just smack and start beating everyone up. Everyone's fighting them. The one in Vanessa's room, like, rips out a chunk of her hair and starts yelling at her in that devil's tongue. So Vanessa gets all demonic looking and starts like yelling back at them in Satan's tongue. And then the one chick who was in her room is like, I'm out. You're creeping me out. She starts running. As the other ones in the house see the one running out of Vanessa's room, they all kind of just like stop fighting. The one chick that's fighting Chandler is like, no sensible shoes now, Mr. Chandler. And he's like, oh crap. Vanessa was right. That chick's a freaking witch. Then all the witches just run out of the house. Chandler goes and runs to check on Vanessa, but she's already, like, on the stairs. Then everyone just ends up in, like, the whole foyer, and they look at Vanessa, and she's like, uh. And then credits. So this one was cool. I liked it. Pretty good. Frankenstein's weird crush, dude. I don't know how that's gonna play out. I mean, Godspeed, but eventually she's gonna find out you brought her back to life, and she's not your cousin. I don't know how you're gonna bridge that gap. You're gonna try and kiss her first, and then explain, oh, I'm just really friendly with my cousins, or what? So they got, like, witchy powers, that inspector is, like, hot on their trail. All kinds of crazy stuff. So what do you guys think of this one? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to do the things. Rate, comment, subscribe. I will catch you guys later. Until next time.